Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're finally going to start talking about the concept and the topic of buoyancy. Now, buoyancy is obviously a very important topic in the study of fluid mechanics and physics and, and science in general. So it's important to discuss what buoyancy is and why it's important and how we can calculate what we call a buoyant force. Now, in this video, I do want to talk about buoyancy in a very specific case and I also want to get to Archimedes principle on what buoyant force is. So the case that we're going to study is a case where the object that this buoyant force is acting on is a uniform object. So I'm not going to be looking at complex objects like boats or ships or canoes or even the human body. I'm really looking at just uniform objects. So uh, examples include a block of wood, a block of ice, uh, 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 some uniform volume of some material. The reason I want to start there is obviously we need to keep things simple and understand the concepts before we bring about more complicated topics, especially in buoyancy, because things can get a little confusing in this concept. But let's say we have this jar, this container. It's filled with water, so it's a fluid, it's a liquid. And in this jar, we submerge some spherical object of, of some constant density and some mass. Now, in all of our previous videos, we know that inside of this liquid, this body of water, that there is pressure everywhere inside of this container. And the pressure is also acting on this object. So this object has some sort of an area that is going to convert that pressure that's being you know acted on this object to some type of a force right remember uh, pressure is really the force over the area so if we wanted to find out what force was we would just multiply pressure times area so pressure times area is equal to force and remember because this object that we have submerged has an area all throughout the surface, there is going to be pressure exerted on that area all throughout the surface. And in other words, there's going to be forces acting on this object in all different directions, on the front, on the back, on the bottom, on the sides, all around. And you can probably see that, you know, the horizontal forces acting on this object obviously cancel out, but there are two forces that are going to be the most important and that is going to be the force uh, at the top of this object which we'll just call force down and that's due to the pressure at the top of the object pushing down and then we also have this force up this force up caused by the pressure at the bottom of the object due to the liquid exerting that pressure on the surface area of this object so again, this object also has a mass, so it's going to have a weight. And uh, for this purpose, I just want to exclude the weight for a second, just so we can try to understand the concept of buoyancy. In this case, we know that force up, which is the force at the bottom of the object exerted by the fluid, is going to be larger than the force down. And you can kind of tell from this diagram that this net resulting force, this net, F net, is going to be acting up. And that's because force up, which is this bottom force, is greater than force down, which is this. So the net force is going to be acting up. So what is that net force? Well, the magnitude, uh, F net, is equal to the magnitude of the upward force minus uh, the downward force. And this is, this F net is essentially the buoyant force that is acting on this object to push the object up. And remember, force down and force up, these forces exerted on the object, is due to the pressure that it's, is exerted on the object by the liquid. So now I want to quickly talk about Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle, right, because this is the principle that essentially explains what a buoyant force is. So I'm going to call that buoyant force Fb. And the principle itself states that the upward buoyant force, which is this Fb, on an object that is either immersed in the actual fluid or is floating on top of the fluid, its magnitude, that buoyant force, is equal to the weight 
of the fluid displaced. If we go back to this container, we put some sort of object inside of this container, inside of this liquid, this fluid, and the actual volume of that object is the same volume of, in this case, water that got displaced. So this buoyant force is going to be the weight of that amount of water that got displaced. So really the magnitude of this FB force, this buoyant force, is really the mass of the fluid times the gravitational constant, right? M times G gives us weight, and this subscript F is just the fluid. In this case, it's water. Now I want to bring your attention back to probably one of the most important concepts in fluid mechanics, and that is rho. Rho is our mass density. Mass density is equal to the mass of some object over its volume. So M over V, mass over volume. And in this case, uh, the water that got displaced, uh, the mass density of the fluid, which is water, is really going to be the mass of the fluid divided by the volume of the fluid that got displaced. On the side here, we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity. So if we take a look at this equation right here and we just rewrite it, right, we multiply uh, both sides by volume, we're going to get the mass of the fluid is equal to the mass density times the volume of the fluid, right? So this is the mass of the actual water that got displaced. So the weight of that water that got displaced, so uh, W of the fluid, is going to be mass times gravity. And our mass is right here. So the mass is going to be rho sub F times the volume times the gravitational constant. So this is essentially what we call our buoyant force. So the buoyant force that's pushing up on this object right here contained inside of this fluid is really the mass density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times gravity. And I want to be very clear that, again, we're just talking about some objects of uniform mass. We're not talking about boats or ships. We're literally talking about if somebody threw a piece of wood into a lake, that wood is going to float. And the reason it's floating is because the amount of water that that piece of wood has displaced has some sort of weight that is essentially uh, pushing up on the piece of wood to cause it to float. And that is what we call our buoyant force. So this right here is our buoyant force. Now we're gonna get into more examples and more complex things, but. Hopefully this makes sense and I will see you guys in the next one.